This peaceful countryside along the Niagara River was once a battlefield. It was here that most of the battles during the War of 1812 took place. During the conflict, many towns and homes were destroyed by both the British and the Americans. Some of the properties, like McFarland House, only survived total destruction because they were pressed into use as billets for officers or hospitals for the wounded. The occupants of these houses sometimes found themselves with important information. Well, this is the home of Laura Ingersoll Secord. Right in the middle of the war, in the spring of 1813, the Americans had invaded the Niagara region here. And we know from records that June 21st, 1813, a small group of the American army was coming through the village here, uh, going back to their headquarters at Fort George. And the story is that the American officers pounded on the door of the home here and demanded to be fed. And while they were in the home eating, either Laura or her husband James overheard them planning an attack on a British outpost called DeCue House, which is just south of present-day St. Catharines. James was still recovering from his injuries at Queenston Heights, and so Laura, a 37-year-old mother of five, undertook to make the journey and warn Fitzgibbon, the officer in charge of the outpost. The distance that she traveled that day was about 19 miles or 32 kilometers to reach the outpost, but she had reached them in time, and she was taken to see Fitzgibbon. She told him what she knew about the impending American attack, and he got his troops ready. Uh, when all was said and done, 542 American soldiers with two field cannon ended up surrendering to a force of about 200 Conewagon natives and 50 British soldiers at what later became known as the Battle of Beaver Dams. Laura was born in Massachusetts, and her father fought on the American side during the Revolutionary War. It was the offer of free land that brought the family to the Niagara region. Laura's story gained prominence in the late 19th century and she became a symbol for the early women's rights movement. In the 1920s, however, she was the victim of a backlash against the feminists and papers were written implying that her walk was pointless and that Fitzgibbon would already have known the Americans were advancing. Laura's story might have slid into obscurity if it hadn't come to light that she had petitioned the government for money and asked Fitzgibbon to write three certificates on her family's behalf. He was testifying in these three certificates that she did what she said she did, and without her help, he wouldn't have won the battle. He wouldn't have known anything about it. Mm -hmm. 